everyone, and welcome to our studio. Welcome, Sandra Young Rocco. Thank you. It's been a long time, Sandra. It has. It has been a long time, but it's wonderful to be here oh, again. Oh, it's so wonderful to have you. Um, before we get into the election mm. and every, everything that you have to tell us, <laughs> uh, I want to show a photo to, to you and our, and our viewers and just a couple of minutes to spend on that issue, if sure. you don't mind. Absolutely. So let's watch the photo. Okay. So, Sandra, what do you think is wrong with this photo? Is there anything wrong with this photo? Well, I was just looking at it, and I'm going like, wow, there's one female in the entire and, room of male. And there's no woman. Yes. What happened to our woman? Exactly. So, I want to tell you that um, um, a woman, woman, because this ha happened to be in Israel, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of women are unhappy about that. And they decided in every city to just take a picture of, of women in innovation, right. women, you know, in entrepreneurs and high tech. And we're everywhere mm -hmm. um, to take a picture with solidarity with, with uh, a German counselor and marker and with every woman yes. in this world that, you know, is it doesn't matter if you're a homemaker or whatever you are, um, you know, I think women have a lot of uh, power and... Um, I don't think any picture, any business picture should be without a woman uh, present there. I totally agree with you. Uh, I, I think that uh, it is, mm -hmm. especially in this day and age, to see a picture with uh, only a man and one woman is, is, is actually shameful, yeah. uh, to be quite honest. With you, you know what they say, a, a picture says a th thousand words. It's, it's like this. <laughs> you know, exactly. So I want to say, tell you that in Toronto, we took this picture. And I'm going to show you this picture in a, in a moment. And really, I want to give thanks to Orly Kermon that uh, was initiated, initiated all this, uh, all this, got all these women together to take this picture. And you know, good for her. She did a wonderful job. So just have a look at this picture. So we all got together, and uh, just to show how you know, women in power. And the last picture uh, is is really of me and a good friend of mine, uh, Raquel Spivak, who is an entrepreneur beyond words. This woman is, I call her a, a fireball of energy. <laughs> uh, she is. And the reason we're saying that, because she's a mother of five boys. Mm. And I'm a mother of three boys. Yeah. And, you know, with behind every powerful man, there is a woman. <laughs> and each one of those men have a mother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're <Absolutely>. never, <laughs> you know, so don't forget our place. So I just, I just wanted to mention it, especially when, you know, I belong to IWB, which is, you know, immigrant women in business. And there's so many wonderful, you know, women that are, you know, innovators, you know, business women and, and, and entrepreneurs and, and look at you, Sandra. So let's start with you. Look, 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 look at you. And by the way, I'm really excited. You know, the IWB, they're going to be yes. launching uh, yes. launching their Vaughn chapter yes. uh, on the 16th, which is next Tuesday, I believe, at uh, my the campaign six, office. Six, 16th of October. That's right, 16th of October at 9960 Dufferin Street, which happens to be Dufferin and Major Max. So please, everybody is welcome. Come. And, uh, you know, maybe join this chapter. Actually, you know, it was my idea to bring this chapter to Vaughn. That is true. That because is true. Because it was too far to go downtown. I said, <laughs> we need something in Vaughn. There's so many immigrant women in business here. Oh, yeah. And we should sure. get a voice, too. So Absolutely. So this is great. I, I'm really excited to uh, to have this launching in my campaign office. I think it's a, it's a great uh, statement to uh, to show that we are so supportive of our yes, female uh, are. entrepreneurs and, and female in yep. general, in yep. whatever they, uh, they decide to do. And, and there's women from all walks of life. And you know, before we get into the election, I just want to tell you for me, why I, I love IWB is because no matter where the woman is from, and they're all immigrant from different countries, different yes. walks of life, different profession, but we all seem to have the same story. Doesn't matter where you came in the world. And I think that's something that should unite us all over the world. Absolutely. I think it would be a great way for people to, uh, that for them to network and to oh, learn from each other. 100%. I think it's uh, is, is, is a, is a fantastic uh, yes, evening. So don't miss it. If you can make it, please come out. No, no, not if you can make it. You have to make it. <laughs> come. And you see a few of our speakers, and I'm actually speaking there too. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm speaking there. So, Sandra, let's yes. let's talk about this. Is actually 
the fifth time you're running. Correct. Yes. Correct. Yes. And why? Well, I think uh, you know, in in the first few terms, I think it's more of really learning. Uh, okay. For me, uh, learning the ropes, learning the process, there's a lot to learn. And as we continue uh, moving forward, different policy, different acts, different legislation that you really have to know. And if you don't know them, you're not going to be able to maneuver around. So uh, I think the first few uh, terms is really about learning and also about setting foundations. Uh, to help set foundations that's going to be able to continue growing and continue uh, doing the, the good work that we're doing, even if I'm not there, that eventually, you know, I'm not going to be there uh, all, all my life. <laughs> but, but, you know, someone, whoever comes in, if the foundation is set properly, gotcha. you can actually move forward. So, I mean, you almost answered my second question, but it's like, what are you going to say to those people that say they want a new, why not have a new candidate, a new face? Just, to, you know, well, sort of I, expand I think that, on that answer. Absolutely. I think that, the, uh, you know, it's, yes, change is always nice and it's always great. But the problem is that unless you have someone that is very, uh, has been very hands-on, has been very much uh, involved in all the process and understand, it's really, really tough. Because I think that for me, uh, to have uh, someone that's already has the experience, who's had the tr uh, proven track records, it's not like I haven't done, I've, done, I've built so much within the community. I have, uh, have maneuvered in different, very complex uh, ways to deal with different issues, different files. Those are very uh, important. And of course, the relationship because I have built up so much relationship within the last 15 years with the staff, with uh, outside agency, with all the different uh, levels of government. Those are very important. Sure. And people sometimes forget that because you, when you want to get something done or if you want to set a goal and you need to reach that goal, you need different levels of governance that people to, uh, to work with. And I have that know-how. I have that relation, uh, relationship with these people. And that's the reason why I think that's, uh, you know, it is appropriate to continue uh, 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 being representative there. So you've been, in, you've been in the government for 15 years. Yes. What is your best accomplishment? Oh, well, two. I think I, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to say two. Okay. One, of course, is my uh, very hands-on with this subway. So I was the, uh, I was the uh, chair of the Spadana York Subway Extension Committee. And, we, and it's not just me alone. It's with many different sure. people. But we were able to get the subway. It opened up this uh, past November. Totally happy. That I got to tell you, for, for anyone that hasn't seen it, you should go down and see it. It's amazing. It is. It's like an art of work. Uh, yeah. It's like a piece of art, you know, uh, the various stations and so forth. But it's just so good mm -hmm. to be able to connect people on the north in Vaughan and further north to downtown uh, Toronto. We are now basically connected. Our universities are connected. York University, U of T, Ryerson, we're all connected. I know, it's and wonderful. it's wonderful. And we're connected to the financial district there in Toronto. So we're really happy that that, that happened. So that's one of my uh, bigger accomplishments. I think the other accomplishment, I have to say, is fighting the casino. Uh, so, so when it, uh, that back in, I guess it was in 2014, whenever, uh, or maybe just before that. I remember. Um, there was this whole casino yep. uh, discussion, and they wanted to come into our downtown of yep. Vaughan to bring in a casino. And I fought that left, right, and center. And I'll tell you, it's funny. Uh, when the, we first started that whole discussion, it was an eight to one. So I was the only one against wow. it, and everybody was saying, by the time we finish and by the time we talk, and I did so much research and so forth, we ended up being 7-2, seven, 7 wow. against and 2-4. Wow. So really proud of that. But again, that, that needed a lot of the community, everyone coming together and really fighting that. And I'm really happy because I'm telling you, if we had a casino uh, here in the downtown now, it would be a whole different uh, 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 view and ball sure. game, not sure. the same. So, if, if you get elected, when, when you get elected, <laughs> I'm very positive, when yes, you, you get are. elected, uh, what will you do in the next, like, four years? Oh, there are still many projects. I mean, the subway is done. The subway what is, is the done, big, you know? but yeah. there are still many projects. One of the major things that we, uh, issues that we have is the fact that we're lacking in major uh, transportation infrastructure or, or road infrastructure, if you want to say. Uh, and that's the reason why we have the biggest 
issue. Construction? The biggest issue oh is traffic, traffic gridlock, traffic congestion. It's construction everywhere. It's construction everywhere. But I say to people that, yes, it's construction. But if the construction is going to lead to something good. I know. It, it's, I, it, know. I know it's But tough. when you're driving, you know, yes. it's like, you know, at 8 o'clock in the morning, and takes you an hour to get somewhere that should take you 15 minutes. Yeah, you forget I, that. I totally we ag- forget that. <laughs> I totally agree with you, but we always have to take ourselves and look at it uh, in, a, in a bigger picture. And the bigger picture is not about building it for us. It's really not about, you know, whether it's public transportation, whether it's road. It's about building it for our futures, for our kids, for our grandchildren, and so forth, so that they have a better life and they can have a better ease in it. That's really what it is all about, you know. So I have major, uh, you know, for example, uh, the, the there's a missing link on Teston Road between Dufferin and Keel. So everyone that comes across uh, test, uh, Teston right now is forced to either go down Dufferin or go north of Dufferin to Kirby or down Dufferin to Major Mac. So it becomes a huge traffic jam there, right? Uh, it's just not, it, it's getting to be too much already. So I've been working with the region because it's a regional role and the province because it's a very, um, mm-hmm. that particular piece of land, there's a lot of environmental, uh, uh, um, I guess, issues and concerns. Mm-hmm. So we're working very diligently to have that open up so that people can actually take the test and roll, go all the oh, way to 400 instead of having to uh, move to other things. The other big uh, project that I am doing is that, as we know, the downtown is being, uh, being uh, developed right now. Mm-hmm. And we want to make it as safe as possible so people can feel easy whether they are walking, bicycling, or, or yes, driving 100%. within, the high, uh, within sure. that Highway 7, that, that, yep. that corridor. Right now, unfortunately, most of the truck uh, traffic is being forced onto those uh, streets. And so it's now mixing with our, our own driving. So we have truck traffic with our residential gotcha. traffic, which is not a good thing. So I have been uh, working with uh, the region. I've lobbied them. And now, of course, it's going to have to go even further up because what I want to do is extend the Langstaff, which is stopped at Credit Stone, over to Keel. But... The problem is there's a CN rail, uh, intermodal there. So we need to build a suspension bridge or some ter- sort of bridge mm-hmm. to go over there. Your region took it on. They did a business case, and it's proven that this is well worth a, a time to do it. So it's a matter of just continue pushing forward. We need the feds involved because, of course, the feds is part of the CN, and we need CN. So we need a lot of different it's, people it's a, it's a working together to put this. It's not, I won't lie to you, it's a very expensive uh, uh, project, but it is a project that I think is well worth it. Once that is extended, all the truck can go up 400 and across Langstaff, and we'll never have to touch our downtown. And that's what I like to see. That's pretty good. Um, a question for you. Hmm. What is a day like in San Rocco's? <laughs> Give me a sense of a day. Like, I mean, what is your day like? Because, I mean, I know you deal also with the residents. Yes. With complaints, with any, you know. Yeah, I yeah. have a big, so I have a big area. So, as you know, my area goes all the way up to uh, Teston Row and Bathurst. That's my furthest east. Uh, so you're Ward 4. I'm Ward 4. So my residential goes all the way up to Teston Row and uh, Bathurst. It goes across over to Teston Row and Keel. But then it comes down to McNaughton, and when I, it's a really uh, sort of interesting. It comes down to McNaughton, but where the go train, the train line, yes. and everything to the east is in my area, and everything to the west is another uh, ward. Mm. So I go down all the way to Duff- uh, Rutherford, I should say. Then at Rutherford, I go all the way across to 400. So wow. it means I also have the entire commercial. So I have Vaughn Mills in my area, of course, the entire downtown in my area. So there's a lot of that's business and commercial. Yeah. But then I also have Concord in my area, which is the entire uh, the industrial area. So I have a really interesting balance sort of a, a ward where I have residential, I have industrial, and I have commercial. So I deal with not only just residential uh, complaints, you know, and complaints can be anywhere from, you know, uh, snow uh, not being shoveled properly or garbage not being picked up or garbage along in the uh, mailbox wow. area. Really? You get those Oh, yeah, too? we get all sorts of <laughs> questions. So like that. And then we get the bigger questions, you know, from the businesses in, in terms of, uh, you know, can we, uh, can we come in here, open up our businesses, and we try to help them, you know, uh, refer them to our economics development and people that want to invest into our city. And so it's a very uh, varied uh, sort of 
of a, 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 a role. So my day is usually going from uh, first thing in the morning, I usually get into the office probably about 8.30ish or 9, and I go straight to, depending if there's uh, yeah. meetings, obviously later and whatever, but then when I get home, then I go through all my emails. I am one that uh, likes to look through all the emails, know exactly what are the issues. I respond to the emails and I, or I refer them to staff to respond. So I usually up till about two or three in the morning. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, that's my day. <laughs> wow. And now of course I have to play uh, as a mother too, right? I have of to drive my, get my kids and do the, uh, I try to do the cooking. Although these days, you know, with the election, it's been pretty hard. We've been eating up more. <laughs> what can you do, a busy mom, you know? <laughs> I know what it's like. Um, <laughs> I would never go into politics, but I know what it's like. Um, I wanna ask you a question. Hmm. I know that uh, from speaking to people, when it, whenever it comes to provincial election or federal election, everybody, yeah, 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 we got to go out, we got to vote. But when it comes to municipal municipality, it's like, yes. uh, you know, like, you know, they, they don't really, you know, seem to have that, that um, I don't know what even to say this, what they lack yeah, of, you, you know. You're so right about that. I, I, I find that and, uh, every time when I knock on the doors, there are many people that just say, ah, it's municipal, I don't, I don't no, vote, no, or I don't yeah. care. And I try to. No uh, passion I, for it. You yeah, know? I try to inform them. I said, but you realize that municipal uh, uh, government is the closest to you yeah. because we're the one that basically affect you on the day-to-day -day basis, yes. whether as I- they don't, uh, they don't realize that the decision, I guess the city makes, yeah. impacts our life immediately. Yes, that's right, that's right. So uh, the services, whether uh, aside from the- Whether garbage, the garbage it, gets picked up or not. <laughs> uh, but uh, aside from that, community centers, programs that we offer, in, uh, uh, parks and libraries, all those things are part of the municipal government. And yet, uh, I do find that uh, people tend to uh, uh, go very, they're much more excited when it's provincial yeah. or, when, uh, or federal, you know? And I tell them, I said, you know, provincial, federal, I mean, it's, it's important, yes. but their policy is, is in a much bigger way. They don't impact you as much as uh, or as directly as municipal politics, right? Um, some people, you know, can I get, take two seconds to tell you a story? Absolutely. So in 2003, when I first ran, I, I rang the doorbell and this gentleman, uh, he's a young uh, professional, probably in his uh, early 20s. Or, he was working from home. And he, when I, when he opened the door, he looked bothered that I even knocked bothered on the door, him, right? Yeah. So I told him, you know, why I was there, and then he goes, eh, I'm not really interested." Well, I gave him the spiel about why I think it's important, right? And then I left him, and I just basically I said, "You know, you think about whatever." It's funny that at the end of the election, he actually emailed me, and he says to me, "I'm not sure if you remember who I am, Aww. but I'm the gentleman that you came and you told me how important municipal politics was." And you know what? I want to let you know, I voted and I voted for you. Oh, so that was so, that was so gratifying. Just was, having yeah. been able to change one person yes. to do that, I think was very gratifying. It's so important for you to go out and vote because, yes. you know, if you don't and things, you're not happy with things around, don't complain. But not only that, uh, the other thing I want to make it very, uh, very important is that people really have to understand who they're voting for. They really need to understand but see, each. I think it's harder with, um, when it comes to a municipal election. Mm. It's harder because I, I, I see it myself. Yes. It's like, wait a second, you know, I, I'm getting confused who's running for, because there's so many different levels. It, it is. It's not as easy that is true. for the average person as compared to provincial or, or uh, federal. Yes, I do think, and I do think that uh, residents needs to take a little bit more time to, to read through the material. But not only just reading, because it's easy for people to come and give you a one-liner and say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to, you know. They're great uh, uh, listening, uh, oh, you know, no, one-liners. No. I think but, most of us know that already. But it's about how do you deliver it? Right. How do you how actually you do execute it? that, uh, right. whatever you're promising? Right. And I think that people really need to be very, uh, uh, very... Uh, clear on that because we see so many candidates that comes in and they have these one liner and say, oh, I'm doing this and this and this. But what are you basing your, your facts on and how are you planning to execute? You, it's great to say a lot of things, but if it's you like, can't, can't deliver, well, that's a whole different I mean, thing. I mean, we, we, I mean, I remember it's like, you know, every, you know, politician, you know, we'll call taxes, we'll do this and we'll do that. And then 
Yeah, so that's the one thing I, I, I Nothing think, happens when they get elected. Well, one thing I have to say is that I'm different is that I really, truly believe uh, I only promise what I can uh, deliver. I will not, uh, I will not over promise anything because I, I, and because of my experience, because I've yeah. been in there 15 years, I know how it works. Well, that's why you got voted in four <laughs> times and you're gonna get voted for the fifth time because people <laughs> believe what you're saying. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really hoping that people actually do uh, take time to read and just, and then and vote. But just so you know, mm -hmm. people in everywhere, I mean, but the, in ours, uh, in Vaughan, you get to vote for one mayor, Okay. And then you get to vote for three regional councillors. So you can vote one, two, or three, but you can't vote more than three uh, regional councillor. And then you vote for your local councillor, wherever you happen to be living, whether it's a ward one, two, three, four, or five, you vote for that local councillor. And then, uh, depending if you are a Catholic school board uh, 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 contributor I mean? or public school board, you vote for one of those uh, uh, trustee. That's what it is. So, so that's what I'm saying. When people look at the ballot, they're like, they, it's, not, it's not as easy it's as true. you know who you're voting for, the provincial government <laughs> or federal government. But no matter what, it's important for us to Absolutely. go and vote. It doesn't matter wh where you live, you need to vote. Absolutely, yes. Sandra, we're almost, the election is almost upon us. Yes. Can you tell, you know, I guess your voters, uh, so tell all of us something about you that none of us know? Because uh, before, because you know, when you're in a public eye, everybody seems to know everything about you. But, <laughs> so true. <laughs> but tell us something that we don't know about. Well, I think, um, oh gosh, um, putting you on the spot. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. Um, well, there's one thing I've never really shared other than the public uh, is that um, I actually uh, am a cancer survivor. Wow. <laughs> So I did battle when my daughter, uh, uh, when wow. I was expecting my youngest, I had, uh, uh, we wow. discovered I had breast cancer. So um, I went through that. Uh, it was, it was, a, it was hard. It was yeah, tough, especially having a newborn baby and, wow, and, and trying to do, uh, deal with that. But I never told anyone, uh, I never shared with anyone except for my very few, very close friends. Nobody really knew. And I didn't, and actually, I forbid my husband to tell anyone too. Because just because I just find that it's something that I had to go through it on my own. Um, I found that uh, I needed to be able to deal with it in my own sort of way and not having, sometimes when you tell people and then everybody wants to come and try, want to have, and it's not that I don't want their help, love their help, but it's just that I need to be you able to, to do it by, on my own. How old is your daughter? Now she's 18. So it's been 18 years. Yes, that's right. Yes. Wow. Yes. That is not good on that. It, that's, you're a survivor. And, but you know, you should share your story because there's so many women out there that uh, just like you or just going through it and to see you, you know, as a survivor of 18 years, I think it will give them a lot of um, energy, a lot of hope, a lot of so many things. Yeah. And I mean, I'm very proud of you for sharing this story. Uh, and I think it's a story that should be shared. Thank you. Yeah, I think I think uh, I should. I just never really. I don't like people uh, feeling sorry for me. I guess that's what it is. And, no, and like the opposite. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. I Thank am you. for you know you you shared your story. You're a survivor. I don't feel sorry for you. I think you're very strong. <laughs> Thank you. And I think a lot of women that are watching you, or actually anyone that are watching you can, you know, see that strength and take, you know, take that strength from you. It built, uh, it actually sure. helped uh, build my own strength too and my own confidence yes. after what, to, to go through that and to be able to deal with all these things uh, mm -hmm. at the same time. I think it really gave me a lot of strength to continue doing what I'm doing. I think this is part of the reason why I want to continue mm -hmm. doing what I'm doing because I want to be able to give back to the community and somehow and I was going to say, only, only, uh, only a person that has gone through you know, something dramatic through pain knows how to give back and yes. how to help others. And yes. uh, I'm very proud of you. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. I wish you a lot of luck. I know you'll win, Sandra. <laughs> I know you have to vote for Sandra <laughs> because she's doing a great job and I know you'll continue to do a great job and you'll come back after the election, <laughs> tell us how, how great it was. And please come to IWB, um, 
Do you want on the 16th, to, yeah, Tuesday the, the 16th address again. at 629. Yep. Uh, it's at 9960 Dufferin Street, which is on the southwest corner of Dufferin and Major Mac, yep. uh, Unit 9. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, seeing as many of you as possible. I think it's a great thing. It gives also, so, and, and guys are, 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 are welcome, welcome too. This is not a because, ladies thing. Because this we want everybody. the guys to be there to support the, 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 the women as well, because there are a lot of women entrepreneurs, yep. all entrepreneurs, uh, women uh, that wants to become entrepreneur, and I think it's great for them to mingle and to learn and to get helping hands from, Absolutely. from the guys. Uh, and the IWB is a fantastic organization, so please come. Listen, it's you know it's a free event. Come and listen, and uh, maybe join. You know, vote for Sandra and join IWB. Thank you, Sandra, very much. Thank you Always so much. Always a pleasure to see you. Thank you. And thank you, guys, and uh, we'll see you again next week.